Welcome to Modules 6 and 7. So this video is going to capture both of those together. Uh, I am wearing a sweat hooded sweatshirt. I'm um, just down here in the basement. A little cool down here today. And um, had have sold my Chevy Equinox. So I've been cleaning it out and this is kind of the, the look for today. So, um, returned this week from a vacation in Superior, and that was, uh, it was fun. Lake Superior is for, not Lake Superior, Lake Michigan. So, let me correct that. We were up in Door County, and uh, the lake, Lake Michigan, is four feet higher than it was three and a half years ago. So, uh, while it's good for a lot of people, you know, boaters with um, definitely able to get their their boats closer in with their docks and closer to, sh to shore and things like that, it creates a problem. Um, the Can Island Lighthouse, we wanted to walk out and to see and go off the, you know, the lighthouse is 150 years older or older. Um, we've gone out many times before and there's a land bridge made out of stone and it always had much space on both sides and this time like it was flooded over but you could still go over if you wanted people would take off their shoes and it was funny there was a pair of galoshes at one side waterproof that if you wanted you could borrow and walk over and I assume take them back when you came back but um, but we decided not to because actually it was one of those things where uh, first of all, you're, you're walking on a rock. It's not like a paved surface, so I'm not sure exactly what you'd be stepping on. And if you have the wrong step, you could be stepping into Lake Michigan. So, um, But I'd never seen anything like that before, like the Canna Island Lighthouse, this, this stone path out there, which is just like a road. And I mean, when we went out there a few years ago, it was definitely elevated. Well, obviously, you know, four plus feet above the side, so you would have never thought it, and uh, so it was very rare. A um, couple things is, is uh, you know, I wanted to touch on the Orlando nightclub, just for the fact that, you know, it does appear at this phase that there was a component of um, uh, prejudice that was, you know, involved in that event. Um, and again, just when I see something like that, besides the, the tragedy, you know, immediately of it, um, you know, that wasn't a random attack. Um, you know, that, that was targeted toward a population. And it's easy to become the, you know, the us and the them, which seems to have happened somewhat in the shooting. Um, although the, the shooter, you know, had attended that club also. But um, it may, makes me think a little bit. I wrote a, a blog post. I don't do too many posts on that anymore because I'm redoing my website and throwing a blog in with it. Plus, most of what I do is probably going to be all video based going forward. But um, so, wanted to talk about a key concept in that. And as you can see, I'm recording this way. Um, did a lot of recording with the camcorder up in. Um, on Indoor County and don't quite have that charge ready to go. Um, but uh, so we have the old fashioned style machine going here. And it's not very organized in back of me. All of that eventually is going to be stripped down and some different wall panels put in and this whole office is going to be kind of gutted and rebuilt uh, very soon. But a few things. Um, one is tolerance and acceptance. We I've heard so much on TV or the media about tolerance. And by people that I think should know 
better than to use the word tolerance in the way that they're using it. You know, all we need is tolerance. We're not tolerant. Um, and these uh, shootings, for example, happen because of, to you know, tolerance. We're not tolerant. Well, you know, that's, I, first of all, I don't, I don't believe that premise. I don't believe that at all. Um, for a few reasons. One, you know, one is the campaign then to teach tolerance, to teach tolerance of other people with uh, other cultural, personal beliefs and things like that. Well, tolerance is a, is, um, is a, is a basement level threshold when it comes to inclusion. It's the lowest step on the ladder. It's actually not the step on the ladder. It's just ground and then, or I guess it's the ladder in a basement and you're on the floor and you step up. But tolerance is not where you want to be at. You want to be at acceptance. And there's a big difference between tolerance and acceptance. And I hope that that has become clear in this, in this course. I have a daughter, five-year-old running around upstairs. Um, but no, you teach acceptance, you, um, and acceptance doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have agreement. That's different, but acceptance is a step where you are trying to understand the other person's point of view, un understand the culture, um, whatever it might be. Tolerance is, you can still um, have, uh, I guess, you know, whole prejudice and, and hatred and all of that and still be tolerant. I mean, if I'm, if I have, you know, absolutely no, um, you know, if I come in and say I have no use for this certain, you know, population of, of people, but um, I'm not going to cause any problems with them, you know, if they or move into a neighborhood near mine or whatever it is. I mean, this isn't a good example, but um, tolerance you see a lot in, in prisons. I mean, we have we have a, a you know max prison here in Portage, and tolerance. Uh, you know, one of my friends goes out and and works um, out there, and. Uh, what you see in tolerance is, you know, you might have two two groups, um, you know, whatever gang, whatever other gang, or, or however they split it up. But um, I shouldn't say there, there's there's a respect so much, but saying you're you, we're us, we're not going to fight through it. Um, but I don't I don't need to learn anything about you. I don't need to know anything about you. But you're you're one of them, and I don't like them. Um, but you know we pass each other during the day, or we have an opportunity during commons. I'm just you know I'm not sitting by you. You sit over with your people. I'll sit over with mine. That's tolerance. Um, now acceptance is what we see a lot in in schools today, and it's. You know, it's not, we're not entirely there at all. We still have these teach tolerance campaigns, which I think, again, it's the most ridiculous thing to come in and to teach a, a, a baseline that, um, you know, I don't, I don't, again, I don't even find that acceptable in schools to teach tolerance, to teach acceptance, yes, and, and to move on from there. But that's the big difference, you know, when I talk about tolerance. Tolerance is, you know, let's just say, um, it's the them and the us. I'll tolerate the them. I don't want to know anything about them. They can walk past me. I'm fine with with that. I don't want to, though, I'm not going to say hi. I'm not going to talk to them. I'm not going to help them out with anything. Um, and there's no chance of us becoming friends or having you know, forming a mutual um, relationship toward the good of, of, of something, you know, toward the good of a city or, or whatever it could be. So 
anyway, it, that's just kind of a, a something that's that's been rolling around a little bit with me because I hear it and I hear it by people that don't understand what they're talking about. And we don't work on teaching tolerance. We go above that. We teach acceptance. So I cringe when I hear, excuse me, or I guess I hiccup when I hear these terms of teach tolerance. So um, we, I, I, and I attended a presentation on, um, it was actually done by an Islamic man talking about mosque. And this was a while ago, a few months ago. And his, he did a really wonderful presentation. It was about tolerance versus acceptance. And it was a small um, Islamic group, not Islamic extremist, small um, group of people that practiced um, Islam. And he talked about the the fear of walking down the street and not knowing if someone was going to you know, jump out and um, attack him or throw something at him or his, his family when they were out shopping. And, and they were even, I mean, very hesitant to rent a place that they could use as a, as a mosque because they just thought it would be, you know, vandalized. And, um, but, you know, he's, he's caught up in a stereotype of what's happening right now. So, you know, we talk about inclusion. And so what the perception of Islamic terrorists, um, you know, where that's been used in the news is representing, you know, a, a very, very, very small population of Islam. So you have so many people that um, practice Islam who, when something like Orlando happens, for example, um, just feel so kind of let down, you know, in the fact that what is it going to take, um, you know, for, for us to kind of step out of this, this stereotype? Um, and part of that, they need, to, they've admittedly need to figure out, um, you know, how, how they go about and, and do that and just, um, you know, represent that they don't want to be tolerated. They want to be accepted. And for me, I want to practice acceptance. You know, I, I talked to this man after his present presentation, which was wonderful. And it wasn't, it was just, it, it was educational. It was, and talked about just some very shared experiences. And, but, um, but yeah, you know, it was, it, it was an example. So, um, I'm getting a haircut Monday. So the wildness of the hair, it goes, I don't know what Monday's going to look like. It's kind of my last go around on whether or not I do the short sides and the long top. If it doesn't pan out this time, it's back to the short, 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 everything. Just deal with it. So that's going to be my, my process. When I say deal with it, I'm saying me deal with it as far as the combing and the straight and stuff. Um, so I did, I did want to touch on those, on those things because I think that's a good discussion to have in schools. And if your school is teaching tolerance, um, Personally, I mean, I don't, I don't think that's that's the right way to go. I think there's a step up from that. I don't think it's a hard step to make in the way you present things, but uh, teaching tolerance is not teaching inclusion. It's it's teaching that you know here's the group of students with uh, disabilities. I mean, tolerance was the 1980s. It, you know, we'll we'll tolerate the student with you know, whatever disability being in the classroom. Mostly back then, it was probably more overt disabilities, cerebral palsy, MD, things things that were, were more visual versus learning disability and things that were less visual um, to, to somebody. But, you know, we'd tolerate. You wouldn't really get to know those students necessarily. Not, not that that was always the case, but 
more tolerance and less acceptance. Today, definitely acceptance. I think schools, excuse me, each um, trimming some trees out back. Uh, schools do a really nice job with with acceptance. So, um, going into the Bill Porter assignment that you have. Uh, first of all, make sure you complete out your posts because on July 1st, I start to enter grades and if things aren't done, then they are going to receive a grade of zero. Um, I do have a very tight turnaround with the turbo. You do have things posted right now, so you have everything a couple weeks ahead of time. But I just need you to know and to respect my, my timelines on that too. So make sure you're getting your post in. It's in the grade book. You know what you have to do. Uh, the posts also have dates next to them. Um, so you know the posts you have to make. I've been reading through a lot of, of things. And you'll see that I'm grading everything. Um, probably not commenting as much as this point. But I will. I regularly get in. And you'll see that I, I do comment. Um, I will hand grade each of your Bill Porter plans. So when they are submitted, I print them off, I grade them by hand, I, you know, so a lot of comments, I scan them back in and return them to you. So that will be um, very detailed. And again, that's, that's your, your course artifacts. And I would use your ungraded version as your course artifact. Some people use graded, it's fine. Um, but that's how that will work. Look over your Bill Porter plan. Again, write it. In a, in a fun narrative type of way. I mean, it's it's a serious matter to have Bill coming into your school um, because, you know, you want Bill to have a, a terrific educational experience and be accepted by staff and peers. Um, and cerebral palsy is not very well known amongst staff and students because it is slow prevalence. And the other part that's going to be something I'll look for in your, in your paper is the fact that, you know, Bill has, should be challenged with academic rigor. I mean, he's a smart guy. And what happens, too, is, you know, someone, well, I'm, I'm going to give away a little bit here, but, you know, like, don't assign an aid all day with Bill. He doesn't need an aid all day. He's a smart, again, a smart young man. Um, an aid you know, for some things such as, you know, if it's it's bathroom um, or if it's, you know, lunchtime or something like that because Bill's probably not going to be able to, you know, cut up and maneuver his, his food um, quite as well. Just that an aide be able to help with that. Maybe, maybe a few other things, but Bill's going to be largely, you know, independent person. Um, Look through, make sure that you're covering all of the different areas, including the clubs. So if you're, if Bill's a kindergartner, I know it's hard. Then you got to kind of note the clubs he's in or note the clubs maybe he would be in once he gets a little bit older. Like, okay, you know, Bill, at kindergarten, we don't have student council, but at first grade, we do. And that'd be great when Bill gets to first grade um, for him to consider that or things like that. Outside agencies that would be involved. Um, again, I'm going to throw one out there for you right now. Easter Seals is one I would put. Um, you can put others. You don't have to put that one, but that's an idea. Make sure that you have those. And again, these mostly read up. Today I was I met with my principal and he notified me that I will have a new student starting next week, and that student's name is Bill Porter. And he shared a little bit about Bill, indicating that um, you know, Bill has cerebral palsy and is moving here from whatever, whatever. So with that information, um, I, you know, decided I was going to learn more about cerebral palsy. This I went about doing it. Uh, did you talk to Bill? Talk to his mom, previous teachers, things like that. How do you prepare yourself then to work with your staff? to kind of bring down the anxiety they might be developing regarding CP and a student with CP also as students. How do you work with that? How do you help Bill acclimate to the school, um, acclimate to other students, other students acclimate to Bill and so forth. And then technology, don't, don't be thin on that. Get into that a little bit. 
Now you might want to just go online and do some searches for some technology. One thing people put a lot, and don't put this, is um, speech-to-text software. Bill has dysarthria or slurred speech. That won't work. Dragon naturally speaking, as great as it is, it's not going to work. There is, however, predictive text software. So if Bill starts to type, you know, the rest of the word or the sentence or the phrase pops up, um, such as co-writer, that would work, or that possibly would work. Um, but look at other technologies, you know, that, that might be available in the classroom. Like if it's a smart board, how would you incorporate uh, lessons so Bill could maybe participate or just other things? Um, I don't want to give away too much, but I, I did. I did want to mention, you know, those types of things. And there's nothing wrong with some low tech stuff too for, for Bill. Um, but definitely, uh, you know, one of the things that you want to remember is Bill's going to become fatigued very easily. Sony technology should be uh, very, not have much, not be very taxing on Bill's endurance. Um, and the other part is that um, do not use speech-to-text software because I will end up writing on your paper. Thanks for putting this. Um, however, Bill's dysarthric speech typically won't work with programs like Dragon Naturally Speaking and so forth. Um, um, last th couple things here, just wrapping up. It's I've appreciated all of you... Um, this during this course it's it's a very interesting time to teach a course because it's a transition from the end of the school year into summer i mean a week ago i was still teach you know teaching we didn't get done until last friday so um and just got back from a, a trip in door county so it's it's really weird how fast things go and i'm like oh my goodness you know we're in the middle of june already so um but, you know, I understand that. I understand it's a different, it's a different time to take a class. So hopefully I have staged the timelines in a way which have worked well and by opening up the modules early at the end here to give people um, some flexibility because I know there's vacations and different things planned. And, and frankly, you might just need a day or two off once you get out of school. And hopefully you're out of school right now. But um, so anyway... But you've, you've really been an insightful group. And I find that sometimes with groups, uh, students at the who are taking this at the end of a, of a school year because uh, they, they reflect back on what the entire year was. And that's very, um, there's a lot to draw from versus if you're teaching this class right away at the start of the year and people need to either predict or you know, kind of think back past last summer of what happened last year, what happened the year before, whatever. So, but thanks. You've been a great class. I appreciate that a lot. Um, and, you know, really, I, I read your posts and I feel the, the energy of, you know, just your passion for teaching and, and just want to thank you for that. It's obviously a difficult time to be an educator um, but yet uh, a very much needed time from the eyes of, of students in society. Uh, my girls attend public school, and uh, we've been very, very pleased with the school system and, and always with their teachers. And I'm a supporter of public education. My dad was principal for 35 years, was my school principal um, also in a K-8 building, so nine years. I might have told that story. So, um, interesting, up in, up in Door County, my, my daughters and I did the go-karts, which was the first time we'd all done them. My nine-year-old previously did the go-karts, but in a cart with me. She wasn't old enough, but this time she was old enough, so she had her own. And then my five-year-old was with me, and, and we all had, had fun. My wife videotaped it. And uh, anyway, about the third time through my my five-year-old puts it right into a wall but it just bounces off and then she keeps going and of course they're not going that fast and she just laughs gets a kick out of it but um but yeah that that was 
a lot of that was a lot of fun. So um, again, I appreciate your um, your posts, your insight, your passion, and this really was a special class for me. Um, I want to I want to convey that. So it's not like this is it, but this is it for the fireside chats, which we have no fire unless it's whatever's back there on fire, which is probably very flammable because mostly papers left over from my dissertation. And mail that I need to shred. Um, no, I do not need an extended warranty on my 2007 Buick LaCrosse. Um, so anyway, um, have a good you know, a couple of weeks, email me if you have any questions. You can get your assignments in early. Just make sure that you're, you're doing them. July 1st, though, is our absolute deadline. So make sure your Bill Porter plan is submitted by then. By then, if not before, get it submitted. Get it submitted. 